All right. So we were talking about how um, that the value proposition is based on integrity. If you don't start from the position that I'm not going to do business with you unless I'm sure it's a fit, no matter how much money you're willing to pay me, if you don't start from that position, you've already under, undermined your ability to have any position with the client. So a good value proposition, you need to be able to solve a big enough problem. If you're not solving a big problem, you need to get out of that business. Because solving a small problem is a good way to have high work, low pay. That's what Walmart is in the business of. Walmart is in the business of solving hundreds of thousands of very small problems. My problem is my shampoo costs $8 at name this store, and it costs $4 at Walmart. That's a $4 problem. What's my time worth? It's going to take 20 minutes at minimum to get in and out of Walmart. That's a good day, no huge traffic or anything. I got 20 minutes. Versus I can go down to, let's say Walgreens, because they're corner store, they're fast and easy. I can get in and out of Walgreens half the time, but maybe it's $2 more. But I'm also going to buy eggs and milk and cereal and all these other things, right? So now, I'm, I, it's piling up. The dollar to $2 now, all of a sudden it's a $30 savings, and that's a bigger problem to solve, right? So start from there, how big is the problem that you solve? And once you start from that position, what are you doing? You're automatically thinking from the customer's point of view. You're no longer thinking about this like, I need to pay the bills, therefore I need to sell eight units. I'm thinking about how does this affect my customer? What problem does it solve for them? And how is this going to make their life better? I'll tell you a really easy way, and this is a free consulting. If you want to know how to phrase your value proposition and how you talk about your product, Search 10 people in your business. You may have to go to bigger cities to get enough feedback. But search 10 of them and go look at their Google reviews. Go look at all the bad reviews. And what that's going to tell you is they had this bad experience. Well, if you want to do the opposite of that. This guy wasn't on time. He didn't deliver his stuff. When he got there, uh, it was all wrong. And he tried to blame me. It was a horrible experience. We're going to be on time. Our stuff is all going to be in good shape. See? So you reverse that. But you also look at the good reviews. Hey, I had back pain for 10 years. Trina came in, and in three months, 90% of it was eliminated. And not only that, she gave me tools to be able to use to eliminate the other 10%. I'm back pain free for the first time in 15 years. Right? So if you know your audience is mainly over 40 guys, maybe overweight, then you know that you're going to deal with these things consistently. They're always going to be this. Right? So you speak that. Then you've got another category of your audience that's in the 20s. They're much more active. So they're, they're more like injury. You're dealing with injury and prep for big activity. So marathon runners, half Ironman, wrestlers, people who do CrossFit. Hey, this is going to make your life a lot better. Hey, I use Trina Service and I was doing CrossFit three times a month and I've always had these nagging little injuries. And I use Trina Service and all of a sudden, Three months later, my injuries are cut in half. Thanks, Trina. I know that's going to be a lot better for me down the road. You see what I'm saying? You're solving problems. You're not saying, I use this massage technique, and it, uh, you know, it's based on this. That's all proof you know what you're talking about. So there's social proof, proof that somebody like me can get the value from you that I want. Then there's legit proof, you know, credential proof. That's why you always see credentials and stuff on websites. So that means, OK, you know what you're doing. That's awesome. You're educated in your field. That's great. You're based on these things. But really, all I care about is getting rid of my back pain. I don't care if you're a 12-year-old with a hammer. If you can get rid of my back pain, I'm good. If you're using a little meat tenderizer thing or a baby jackhammer, I don't care. As long as you can get rid of my back pain. When I was in my 20s, I was a lot, a lot bigger. I had a 56-inch chest. And I had 21 inch arms. I was huge. And uh, this guy tried to massage my back, and he couldn't get down to my spine because of my back muscles. They were that developed. And so he was walking, and he would dig his heels in, and he was like 220, 230. And that's the only way he could get down deep enough into the muscle tissue. I just thought that I was talking about the jackhammer. All right, so now let's talk about you. What value proposition? Trouble do you have? What questions do you have? What did you think about? What do you think about your own value proposition? Let's talk about what your value proposition is. Ooh, let's not do this. It's 
very humid here. Isn't it? It's like a lake of water coming out of water. All right, value proposition. So I, I put together this little, oh, you know what? Let me show you this video first. There's two videos. How many of you have been out watching the whole Apple thing? You know, Steve Jobs guy, Apple, that Apple. Not like fruit. Come on, somebody talk and make me feel welcome. So, what? Watching Apple. what what they're going through for transition or? Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. You know, Steve, Steve Jobs was the beacon of that whole thing. Yeah. And now he's gone, now what? So, I've been watching very closely the, the advertisement. They got absolutely nailed when they released this one, and they don't run it anymore. They only ran it for maybe two, three weeks. Um, they ran, they ran a, a commercial that was telling you what you use the iPad for. So it was, it makes your life better because you spend time with family. It's the thing that makes you feel this. It's the thing that makes you see this. It doesn't. And it was so opposite of everything that Apple had ever done. But here's the problem. Okay, number one, let's back up to this. Do you realize we're only six years away? Six years removed from no iPad, no iPhone, no smartphones. There were no smartphones. None. The, the, the iPhone was released in 2007. There was also no Twitter and no Facebook. So January 2007, no social media, not really. There was there was uh, MySpace and Friendster and all these little yeah, little animals like running around. around. But there was no massive like all pervasive. There was no Instagram, none of that. It was all that was only six years ago. Okay. So when Apple released that, how much did they have to say about it? It was so revolutionary. All they had to do was say, Hey, look at this thing. You have never seen anything like this. Here, go have fun. And guess what? All your friends want it. I remember Will Smith going on to Leno, and he had an iPod hanging around his neck. And Jay, Jay goes, well, what was that? He goes, that, oh, this is just an iPod. He goes, what's that? He goes, well, it holds all my music. He goes, what do you mean all your music? It holds 8,000 songs. Now, the ones now are massively more than that. I think they're like 32 gig now, maybe even 60 gig. Anyway, the whole point was that immediately, so the moment he said that, I wanted an iPod. That's all I have to say. Now think about that value proposition versus now Apple's in the position of not how much different are they than anybody else. They have a good operating system that's solid and is virtually bug free. It doesn't have gigantic horrible bugs like a lot of the Android phones do. But Android has come a long way, especially with Samsung. So now I want to show you this. Here's the thing that struck me about this commercial. They were 30 seconds into the commercial, and I still didn't know which phone company it was. Advertising it. That's what struck me. So I'm going to show you the that. This is what you call a bad value proposition. Did we get it? Yeah, here we go. Okay. Now, here's I know which phone this for. You can tell that was an iPhone? No, it's just right below an iPhone 5. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We got to tell you, girl. It's not that commercial, it's beautiful actually. But this is what's the problem. For Apple, well, this is the original. This is, really, this is recent. This is what they play now. I mean, it really is beautiful. Though. It's beautiful. It could be a Samsung, it could be an HTC, it could be. Right. Now, if you know iPhones well enough, then you recognize some of those designs. Also, 
one of the most revolutionary products from a long time. Hey, I'm Jenny McCarthy. You know, being single has its perks, but when it comes to smoking, smelling like an ashtray is not the ideal aphrodisiac. That's what I love about blue. When I switch to blue electronic cigarettes, not only did I feel better about myself, I felt the freedom to have a cigarette without the guilt. With blue e cigs there's no tobacco smoke, only vapor. Now when I go to public places that don't allow smoking, I can put off my blue and know that I won't see your guys spray. Now that's about as long as a TV course goes. For whatever reason, this is like three minutes long. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. But think about what she said right from the get, right from the jump. Being single has its advantages. Everybody knows, well, a lot of people know. She split from Jim, Jim Carrey like what, a year and a half ago. Yeah. So she's newly single. So it's a great position. Jimmy McCarthy's on the market. Now, all of a sudden, she's like, but. If, uh, there's, but you know what really makes me mad, or really, here's my pain, presents the pain very clearly. And every smoker feels this pain. Yeah. Why? Because they have smoking everywhere now. It's hard to smoke anywhere. Now they're making it where you got to be 50 feet away from the door. Where are you going to smoke here? You can't get 50 feet up there without another door. You're going to have to go out there and smoke. Tree, yeah. So now, all of a sudden, whoa, you mean I don't have to do that? I don't have to go outside. My brother smokes, and I tease him all the time. He'll be going outside, it's 15 degrees. I'm like, hey man, enjoy that. Enjoy that cigarette, that should be awesome. So, clear value proposition. Okay, now, a lot of people who exist, especially when, you, when you're really looking at the two camps of advertising. Some people are for the beautiful ID. And you don't say anything. You just, it's a beautiful ID. Now, if you're putting out tons of ancillary messaging, and then you can just put a brand out there with a beautiful setting, I guess, if you can afford to do that, that's fine. But when you're in our position, you're a small mid-business, you've got a very small window to capture the customer's attention. In search, the home page will have typically 30 options, three zero options. That means you're one of 30. If they click on you, you've got about four to five seconds at the most. You need to grab them, tell them this is what we're about. It's a great idea to have a testimony on your home page. It's a great idea. Okay? Because what that, what is that? I'm automatically going to that social value chain, right? Keith used credit service. Keith's just like me. Know who your ideal customer is and how you're going to execute that. So now, let's talk about you. So you said that's if you can't afford it, Jenny McCarthy. Well, that's not just the <laughs> They've got Stephen North. They have tons and tons of billboard placement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's not just that. It's Geico. Geico is a really good example. Geico, you know, they're, you remember their famous value proposition where they hit the, hit the ground running. 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes will save you 15% more. You can't beat that. That might be one of the best ever. That might be one of the top ten. I mean, I think it's easily one of the top ten. But it might be the best value proposition ever. 15% to save you 15, 15, uh, 15 minutes to save you 15% or more. How long did that take you? Maybe, maybe 10 seconds? Probably less? Yeah, but bam! Bam! How much that would save By the way, Warren Buffett found Geico when it was one dude in a third story office building writing, doing other writing. And he built it into what it is today. That's why I warm up for him. <laughs> so the point is, how can you be crystal clear, lightning fast? So what would you say? Let's go around the table and say, what is the main problem you solve? Let's start with that. I guess with what I'm talking about now, I'm trying to figure that out. The writing an inspirational blog and um, so you want people to feel inspired. People to feel inspired to do something, something like what? Feel, or feel better about themselves, or maybe just examine their lives. Okay. All right. So, so then, what would be the reverse of that? The unexamined life. I'm not inspired. I feel stuck. So your outcome is a reverse of your pain. So if you start with, what I try to do is put myself in a position where I'm looking at my customer through my customer's eyes. They've used me for a year now, but 
What do they see that they haven't seen before? That's, that's where you want to be. So start from there and then work backwards to the pain. Man, I used Craig's service. I, I checked out his blog and I, I bought it or whatever. It is that you're selling at well, some point. Anything, yeah. I know that. Okay. But at some point, yeah. um, I started using the service he recommended. I got on his membership site. I mean, it was only 20 bucks a month, and I, the best 240 bucks I ever spent. It's been a year. I feel this way, this way, this way. Versus when I started, I felt this way, this way, this way. So it's that kind of like anybody else? Somebody's got to solve the pain. Well, um, let's see. People who, who might eventually hire me would. Um, uh, have a problem either in their living space or, or um, it's inconvenient, it's not functioning, their family's growing, and it's, um, uh, they aren't able to um, kind of live life to the fullest or be their, their happiest. Or maybe, um, you know, if it's a business, a bricks and mortar business, um, their, their space is not um, allowing it to be as good as it could be. And so, um, you know, in the ultimate way, me solving their problems and these functional problems, um, helping them make their dreams come true, really. Sure. Okay, but you want to get more specific than that. Yeah. So, in both of those, you're a little too broad. The second part is way too broad. The first part, your living space isn't what you want it to be. So, let's think about that. I, I have a house, I love the house. But, I always trip over this step. I always, I have to take everything around two walls to get from the kitchen to the dining room because of the way the house was built. It was set up, it was redesigned later, it was updated, the dining room was moved, but now I've got to go around here. Or I come to my house every day and the, the left side just looks bland. So if somebody wants to keep their house, but they want to make it better, right? So almost always it's going to be a situation of I'm tired of it. X. I love my house, but I'm tired of this. I want it to be this. Or, another big one, especially in a hot market like this, is I want to sell my house, but I know that this takes $50,000 of value. If I can fix this, I could, I could I raise the value by 15 grand and probably cost me 20 to fix it. So, can I make a $20,000 fix to give me $50,000 in resale value? That's powerful. Another big one is because when you begin to speak this, a lot of remodelers are going to jump in the pool there. But how are you different than just this remodeler in a truck? No, seriously, how are you different? Well, um, uh, most remodelers or um, contractors, you can um, save money by skipping an architect and going to just a remodeler or a construction worker. But you're, you're going to lose value. I mean, it's going to, um, it, it's hard to generalize all of them into one group. but. Um, there's, there's a lot of services you're missing. First of all, you're not going to be able to visualize it. They're not going to be able to visualize it for you. So when you work with an architect, they're going to um, just give you options and draw them for you and show you, you know, we can do this, this, or this. You're going to know what you're getting as opposed to just words. So let me stop you right there. Yeah. You've got to find a way to boil that down into a very succinct delivery. I know the value of it because I've drawn plans before. And I know the difference between telling a customer, hey, we're going to do this, this, and this, versus, hey, this is exactly how it's going to look. So I know the value of that. Most people don't. They do know they'd like to see it. So testimonials would probably be the best way to do that. Man, I used Keith, and he showed me exactly what it was going to be. Man, when they finished building it, it was exactly what he said. Seeing it gave me these feelings. I felt more secure. I felt uh, really more excited about it. Having it hanging in my office, how it was going to look. So something around that. With everything, you have to be succinct. It has to be just pulled down. Here it is. So it's yes. some way to differentiate between a blueprint and an architectural rendering or something or whatever. I mean, anybody that's adding a room has to have some kind of plan. So even the remodeler can have a blueprint or something. Right. And both of you can't look at a blueprint and visualize what it looks like. Or if you can send give them some sort of Architectural rendering that will actually show them what. That's right. Yeah. Well, here's another visual. Well, here's the one I want to get to. Or what this whole thing is. Going to be. Yeah. So the biggest thing, the difference between you and the majority of remodeling contractors out there is education. Okay. And accreditation. If you're an accredited architect and you're licensed, whatever, I don't know what your stuff is. But you bring something to the table 
from the city's point of view, the remodeler doesn't. The remodeler's going to go get a permit, yeah, we're going to add this wall, but guess what? It's all on the customer, whether that's a load bearing, he pulls out a load bearing wall or a piece of a load bearing wall. Who, who's going to pay for that? The customer. You know, if you do some remodels and put value in your house and then your, your roof line sags because somebody didn't do the research, then they're stuck. So you bring this, this that's, a, that's a safety, that's security. I'm secure in knowing that the, the repair of my house was planned by somebody who knows what they're doing. And you can use horror stories with this. Use newspaper stories. Seriously, <laughs> listen. Pull newspaper stories. Yeah, the other day in Chicago, this guy in the front wall, this house fell off. And it, this is why. Just use a little blurb from it, link out to it, and then give 300 words on how it, using an architect would have been different. Yeah, it cost you this much money. But is, I'm going to throw a number out there, is $3,000 really worth having the front of your house fall off? Yeah. Is it worth you having to redo it? I've got a buddy of mine that he was just, it was a bad plan. He did $35,000, $40,000 worth of remodels to his business without getting a permit. And then had to pay somebody to tear it all out. So he lost all that. Where an architect, I mean, would you ever to give somebody a plan and say, yeah, just go to it, don't worry about getting a permit? Right. I mean, we would put our, our license at risk if we did that. Exactly. Exactly. So that's what you want to bring to it. And then say, hey, we work with some of the top remodelers in, in the, uh, the, the Austin area, and then have their logos there, people that they, now see, this is, this is the beauty of stuff like this. See, when you're somebody in your position, all of us don't get this kind of thing, but you do. You can use their logo, because they're going to love it. They're going to love getting a little more love. But guess what you get? Think about this for a second, because this is powerful. If their logo's on your website, what do you get? Same thing. No. You get their, get their task of approval of you. Yes, but, okay, let's take somebody, who, who do you know? Let's take it somebody you know. Who do you know in remodeling or home services? Who do I know? No, anybody else? Somebody big. ABC has a handyman or a home lot of remodeling insurance. Yeah, let's, let's say Texas Allstate Roofers. What's a big uh, roofer? Chamberlain. Okay, let's say Chamberlain Roofing. Now, what you get from this is, I'm going to assume we all know this, we've not, probably not, I've never heard of it, but let's say we do. What you want to do is research to find out what are the most well known, and you want those on the front of your website. Because what happens is, you get the benefit of all their advertising. I know for a fact that, that ABC has more than a million dollars just in search rating. Every year, one in a billion dollars goes out in search of it. So if someone searches for Chamberlain, I pop up in that map. No, when they see your site, it's called social proof. If you work with this guy who I see on TV all the time, it must be good because I see it on TV. Okay? There's, a, there's some studies, uh, there's a book, what's it called? The Psychology of Persuasion. Awesome book. Awesome book. They did a study. And they, they put Visa, MasterCard, icons in a room. That increased purchases. But then they went, what if we did only cash? It still increased purchases. Cash purchasing, people not using a card, it increased purchase value, price per transaction, everything. Their logos? Just the logo. The logo they were using it. I'm very confused. I'm going to go ahead and say, so what you're saying, because he says something about him. Yeah. So if I have my website and I put James Cannon's name on that, how would that tie in? Well, or first of all, if you had James Cameron's name, I would doubt, I would doubt your veracity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's too big. Okay. Um, what, what you would want to use is stuff like Austin Film Festival, do some pro bono work for South By in return for being able to use their logo. You've got South By. Austin is a very, um, owner-operated, slanted city. We like people who live here and work here. I live here, I give here, it's very big here, right? So you want to use stuff that's local. Stuff that's national work that you've done, but that's the reason you do stuff like that. You do some good work, you put it out there in return for letting, letting you link with their logo. The logo's big, a link's not enough. The logo is huge. Um, do, have you, any of you gone from 
say Time Warner or ATT Uverse over to Dish. There's a this perfectly reinforces it. With Dish, on the left side where all the channels with the names, it'll say 242 is uh, was what a Discovery Channel. What Dish does is they have the icons there. I could not believe how much faster, because I'm, I'm a very fast reader, I read very fast. I could not believe how fast I could scroll through channels when the icons are there. Because I don't have to process the reading block. Just the image, it's enough. I can just blow through channels. It was amazing. It was really amazing. So, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So what happens is I feel more secure dealing with you because of these trust icons. They're called trust icons. 100% satisfaction guarantee the big one. Uh, that, that seal, you see that seal a lot. Um, those are big. Uh, Chamber of Commerce is huge. Better Business Bureau is huge. Good housekeeping used to be. They hit some scandal skid a few years ago because they didn't give their seal to anybody. All you have to do is buy it. Uh, so, any, any other questions, thoughts? Does that get you further along? Yeah. So that's the problems you, serve, you solve and the outcomes over here. I tell you, this market, one of the things I would do is get Get behind somebody, even if you have to do a cut rate. Get some people that you help improve their house and sell for more money, and make it numbers. You know, I I was able. I did a twenty thousand dollar repair. We made fifty thousand dollars more out of the house, and it was thanks to this architectural report. I would it, just an architectural report might give value to a house, uh, like an inspection almost, but it's an architectural report. Like if because a lot of people are coming out of California where they're selling houses five times as much as they are here. And they're coming here for the money in the house. So if they wanted to do uh, uh, remodeling, you know, an architectural report might be something uh, good to add value. I don't know. Find some, some real appreciation. Sure. Sure. Uh, you said that you know, they would be uh, an addition added to it to make it work right or adding another bathroom or whatever is going to. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, anybody else questions, thoughts? Trina, you haven't said much. What about your value proposition? You hate them? <laughs> or you hate the fact that they're there? Yeah. Very, I like them. Yeah. That's the reason I always get the salad, because I'll, I'll, I'll be like, I'll eat half the fries, and then I eat all the fries. I said two. I said two. Exactly. Said 20 fries, though. My brain doesn't understand what two is. Oh, so me. Um, yes. Oh. Um, luxury plus skill. Okay, what does that mean? What does it mean to That means a uh, that means a uh, Mercedes Benz S plus a degree. <laughs> um. Well, because I'm still sure. building out. Absolutely. Um, so you want to bring the spa to the person, right? Yes, but I want to do a, I, I want to jump on the Airstream bandwagon. Okay, what does that mean? Um, when you are mobile and uh -huh. you go to someone's house, a lot of people aren't um, comfortable uh, having you in their home. And also, and it's not only that, it's also um, having all your equipment, the necessary yeah. equipment. If someone wants a hot stone massage, trying to lug around a bunch of stones exactly. But if you have it all set up in one location, you just say, hey, come so on. all in a trailer. A mobile spa, basically. Exactly. But what the value there is, hey, you don't have to leave your home. I'm bringing the spa experience to you, mm -hmm. right? So all the things, and then the social group is going to be so huge because you're dealing with something nobody's experienced before. So having friends or people like them who've experienced good things out of this is going to be just monstrously huge. Yeah. So doing trade, you need to get five or ten good solid reviews under your belt, then start marketing. Because all the marketing in the world, this is where a lot of businesses make mistakes, all the marketing in the world will not matter if you don't have social proof. I say it won't matter. It's going to get you some sales. But proving that somebody else like me got the same result that I wanted, that I want, is huge. You can't overstate it. You just can't. The first um, word you said was luxury. And um, maybe you could say like um, convenient luxury, something like that. Because um, convenience is really what you're bringing 
Yep. And, um, and luxury, if you just say luxury alone, that makes me think really, really expensive. That's exactly right. And so convenience can seem kind of like inexpensive, but if you balance them together, it's like the best of the world. That's exactly but I, I like your idea. I mean, it's super cool, very awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What he says is exactly right. Think about what, who else advertises luxury and how they do it. Number one, most of us don't see advertisements for luxury. You know why? We're not, we're not looking for them, but we're not reading, we're not in that, that space, if you will. Exactly. People that are truly advertising luxury, not pretending that something that maybe isn't luxurious is, they're not trying to shine this up. They are truly advertising luxury. They're advertising select magazines that only rich people get. Yeah. I've seen some of them, and it's like, come aboard our yacht and have this entire suite to yourself. I'm like, just an apartment like that would cost five grand a month. I have no idea what that looks like on the yacht. I mean, it's just mind blowing. So, well, well and, and it's because. Feel luxurious. Well, well, I think it's it's more than that. I mean, because I'm used to, you know, I lived in Vegas, and I'm, yeah. I'm used to, like, working in those air, those things, so I know what it takes sure. to have that experience. Sure. So, I'm not saying you won't so, deliver it. But I but shouldn't the mark it. point is, yeah. how, it's, it's not, but again, now you just illustrated perfectly what inside-out thinking is. You're thinking from what you know instead of what your customer knows. Now, if you get somebody to say, for less than 300 bucks, I had the most luxurious experience of my life, now that's a completely different animal. Because now you said somebody else liked me. Again, we get back to this chain. Because everybody's all about me. We like to say, oh, I'm giving, I uh, do nonprofits, but really, I want my cereal, where my cereal goes, I want my, I want my food, I want my AC, I want my big drink over here, I'm going for myself right now. I want my feet up, I want to be watching the Rangers. That's what I want. Now, if I can have this and I can say I'm self, uh, selfless over here and have this, awesome. I love that. But I don't want to sacrifice this. So, people want what they want. So, the, the, the marketing is the message. It's the message that delivers the product to the person. Because if the wrong message or great product will get missed. Because, why? I'll dismiss it. It's not for me. If it's confusing, I don't know what it is. Wrong place, wrong time. I say all the time, I say this frequently, so if you've heard it before, please forgive me. A sale happens when the right product meets the right prospect at the right time. And you can also say the right message. That's when a sale happens. Now, I, I want to ask, uh, you said you work in Las Vegas and other places. Is Austin, will the market support something like that? I know there's 